awesome sauce. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Trisha. I am from Insectopia, and today we're going to be identifying... I'm going to turn that light off really quick. Today we're going to be identifying longhorn beetles. Now, um, we're going to play, you know, my, my, my video is going to probably turn on and off over the course because as I'm working on my microscope, you guys don't really need to see the side of my face. Plus, I want to make sure that you have the ability to see this key that we're going to be working on over here. Now, um, there is something interesting happening with this key, and that is that um, this is not a dichotomous key. So a lot of times people use a dichotomous key to identify insects. So it's um, a di dichotomous key means you have... Um, like two options, right? So you go to the first couplet and you have to cho choose choice A or choice B and then those choices will take you to the next step. That's a dichotomous key. This is what we call a lucid key. And so lucid keys don't have as much structure. They don't say you have to look at it in this order and you have to look at this characteristic. Instead, it's just a series or a list of characteristics that you check yes or no, and it will work the individual down for you. So I'll sh pull this over just quickly so that you can see. Um, on the other side of this screen, it's gonna have this, um, it's going to have this list of different specimens that our longhorn beetle could be. Um, and then once it gets all the way down to one, then we know what it is. So that's how lucid keys work in comparison to a, um, a dichotomous key. So we're going to start, we're going to get going, and we're just going to work this insect down from the head all the way down to the elytra. We might actually start with elytra first because that's an easy one. Yay! Doop doop. Perfect. Okay, body. <laughs> All right. Hey, unselect. And he says, no, I want to select the body. All right. I will see you guys around. Hopefully you guys will still hear my audio and everything will be great. Okay. Get that light turned back on. Now, um... We started off we started off by looking at the geographic distribution of our let's see, I need to get this all set up again. Why is it that's fine. I messed with it. Alright, so we're in the Nearctic region, all of North America is. Um, let's look at what characteristics we can find for this the elytra. So under elytra Make sure that you guys can see what I can see. All right. So under elytra, we have um, uh, the development, whether they're completely developed or whether they're kind of short for flight. And so if we check out our specimen, the elytra, this is going to be the the... The first pair of wings or essentially the shell on the top of its body so it's got one elytron or two elytra is plural and if we scroll all the way down to the end of the abdomen you can see that they are completely covering so we can check that off and then we'll go back in let's see elytra apices what do these say Aha, uh -huh. so this is asking us if the end of the elytra has um, spines or not, no spines. So it says by spinos. Um, I love lucid keys because there's pictures. All right, so we're going to go here. Okay. And as we minimize these, it saves our answers. All right, let's go look at, let's go look at the head. Uh, that said body. Let's look at the body. That's fine. All right, so our body, are we're going to be looking at if it's flattened or cylindrical to convex. I can tell you right now this body is flattened, but if you want to look at it yourself, 
we can put it sideways on the microscope. So, um, I mean, it is a large beetle, but it is not a globular beetle. You can see that it is mostly flattened top to bottom. All right, body color, either metallic brown to black or various, definitely brown to black. Body not distinctly tapering, body just distinctly tapering. We're not going to answer that one. The fun thing about lucid keys is if you're not sure, you don't have to answer it. All right, what is about the head? We're going to go check out its eyes. So as we're looking at his eyes and where his antenna um, touches his head, we're looking at whether the eyes are round to slightly emarginate or if they're reniform. Surrounding antennal insertions. Most, um, most longhorn beetles are going to have these reniform eyes, and ours very much does. What about the antenna? We can kind of see those right now. Um, let's see where the antenna is inserted. So it's asking if the eyes are, if the antenna are inserted near the mandibles or if they're inserted between the eyes and not near the mandibles. I think I want to go near the mandibles. Let's look at this picture. Hmm. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. All right. the antenna length in general. So if the antenna are short, if they are moderate, so extending beyond the elytra, or if they are extend beyond the middle, beyond the posterior edge of the prothorax, but before, but ending before the near the middle of the elytra. We're gonna go right here. You can see that our antenna ends right about... So this is the end of the antenna on top of its body, and you can see that it ends right about at the hind leg, so that would be right about in the middle. All right, I've looked at this one a couple times already today, but we can look at it again together. Um, this specimen right here has um, this 
um, segment two is less than a third the size because if you look at our picture over here we've got um, the different segments of the antenna so this first one here is called the scape and then the rest of them are called antenna mirrors and so this is going to be the first segment of the antenna right here and it's significantly smaller than um, the first antenna segment. So we're going to do this. Uh, antenna segment two wider than two longer than wide or wider than long? No, not longer than wide. This one. We're not going to worry about this one, I don't think. Okay. Uh-oh. So what I'm looking at right now is that, unfortunately, we have discarded all of our friends, so we've answered at least one of these wrong. So what I'm checking with now is the fact that our key doesn't. We're going to shrink this down so that you can see what I'm seeing down here. Mm. Sidebar. Let's chat about this. We accidentally had a situation where all of the entities were discarded, which means that we answered some things wrong. So I'm going back and checking on the features that we did choose um, to see which one could have been the one that kind of knocked all of our, our ideas off the table. And so I re-clicked this Nearctic region, and so that's the only one that we've chosen so far. I would say body coloration is pretty obvious, brown to black. That actually only pulls us down, that pulls us down to two subfamilies. Maybe that's what's up. Elytra well developed. I understand. All right, so we got our friend down into the subfamily Lepturini, but this isn't the species that we have, right? So now um, let's talk really quickly about um, the organization of insects because we have the family, which is Cerambicidae, or all of the longhorn beetles. They're all called Cerambicids, and that is what we call a family. And if you're going down one step in insects, you would then go to subfamily. 
which is just essentially taking the family and breaking it down into subdivisions, subdivides, and subdividing the family, right? And um, we have lepterini as our subfamily. I believe that this key, um, I believe that there's another lucid key for the lepterini subfamily. So let me go chat. Yeah, Lepterni. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, so we've got it in the subfamily, and now we are going to get it down into tribe. So tribe is going to be the next breakdown in longhorn beetles. So we'll just go ahead and shrink this back down to where it was so that you guys can, can see where we're going. Give you some pictures over here to the side. So these entities that are remaining, we gotta make sure that, that they stay up here so we don't have another break like last time. All right, so if we wanna talk about, let's see, we're already kinda looking at the head, so let's see what they say about the antenna length. Um, uh, the antenna is either short and not reaching the elytra or long and reaching the elytra. Uh, apices, though. I mean, it doesn't reach the entire end of the elytra, so I don't, let's see. So we just had this, um, so we just had this YouTube video about the antennal shapes, and so this is kind of a fun example. We're looking at whether the antenna is filiform, or it looks like a hair all the way down, or if it is expanded kind of laterally. Now this is a really, really obvious expansions. But I mean, I wouldn't call that filiform. Let's see where that takes us. I would say that our friend's body is this type of shape. It's not really elongate. He's generally ovoid. Maybe that'll help us a little bit. No metallic reflection. Sorry, friend. You're not metallic. Let's see. We've got a size question. I've got a ruler right here that I can throw up against our guy. He looks like he's about 30, so he's moderate sized. Geographic distribution, that's going to be a good one. We are going to make it in the Arctic. Uh-huh, got rid of one of them. All right, so we're going between three different tribes right now. All right, let's look at the pronotum. So the pronotum is going to be the segment right here. So we've got the head, the pronotum, and then the elytra. All right, and so we're going to be looking at this segment right here, and our key is asking us whether it is elongate, subquadrate, or transverse. I would say that our friend is wider than long, so transverse. And then what about the lateral margins? Maybe that'll help us out a little bit. Without distinct spines, with distinct blunt tubercles, with distinct acute spines. I would definitely say that those are distinct acute spines. Do you see them?
sometimes it's hard to get it exactly right for the microscope, but yeah, right here. Those are definitely distinct and acute. How cute. All right, so let's say that got one of the options off. All right, so now we're going between these two tribes. We have to find another feature that'll split them. All right, we finished with the body. Let's go back to this elytra question. No. They're about as long as, but that's not gonna help us. Geographic distribution isn't going to help us. This one might. I bet you this is the difference. Antenna not reaching the elytral apices. Antenna long reaching the elytral apices. See, look at how short the antenna on this beetle are. Those are really, really short. The apical, I want to say that they're short because they don't reach the end of the elytra. And I don't know if that's what the key is going for. But do you see how our antenna end about halfway through the elytra? Oh, it didn't change anything? Okay, well that doesn't matter then. Let's see. We answered this one. What's gonna be the difference between those two? Is it gonna be this? No, with spines. We have two entities remaining. Mandible, slender, acute, with a pubescent fringe along the inner margin. the answer I haven't as answered yet. This one. Alright. So this key didn't take it down because it gave us two options. say that 
right, that one gave us two options, and I'm going to have to find keys for probably both of those tribes just to see which direction it might fall. I also might go ahead and take a look at, um, and take a look at uh, iNaturalist or Bug Guide to see if I can also compare a little bit. I wonder what family Prianus is in. Oh, they're in Prianony. All right, but we do have multiple longhorns to identify, so um, I'm going to say that we've taken this guy down as far as we can in this key, and we're going to have to find another key to figure out him the rest of the way. Oh, I can't have two keys open at one time. Sad day. All right, so we got him down to Lepturni and then two possible tribes, and we're going to have to go ahead and go on to our next one. Let's pick one that's a little bit smaller next time, but it's cute. I like these guys. I think they're adorable. Alright, so this longhorn beetle is going to be significantly different than our last one, alright? Definitely significantly different in size. The last one was about 30 millimeters, whereas this one is only about 10, so it's about a third of the size. And if you look at his, um, yeah. He's just really cute. Uh, we'll turn him to the side so that you can see. He's kind of got these really cute expanded legs, too, which I think is a characteristic of, of one of the subfamilies. Alrighty. So, we're going to start off, as always, on our Lucid Key. We're going to click New Arctic because we're only working with um, North American specimens. That gets rid of a couple of these oddball subfamilies that we don't have to worry about. And now we have five subfamilies remaining. Alrighty. Let's start with... I like starting with the elytra. All right, the elytra look like they are definitely fully developed, even though the little he's a little friend. All right, there we go. So we're gonna say that they are well developed. and that there are no spines on the end of its elytra. And then we are down to two subfamilies, Lepturini or Dystoneidae. And Dystoneidae isn't even a cerambicid, so it's probably a Lepturini, like the last one. if we can see this on him. Legs. And this one's a little bit difficult to see, but it has has this third segment concealing the four. Tarsi pentamerus with third segment not concealing the four. With third segment concealing. Alrighty. I wonder 
wonder what the big difference is going to be between why the why Distineity is still hanging out here. Body flattened. He's not really brown to black. Variously colored, maybe, but I'm not going to click it. Head narrowed behind eyes, head not narrowed behind the eyes. Probably not. Oblique C-toes groove along the outside edge of the mesotibia. seeing any type of distinct groove. So what we're going to do is, I'm 90% sure that this is a Cerambicid and not a Distineid. I don't know why he keeps showing up. But um, we're definitely going to be going with, it says three entities remaining. I only see two. That's fine. Distineid probably has a subfamily it's counting. It 
sometimes like trying to figure out a, uh, it's like trying to figure out a puzzle sometimes. There you go. Better image of the side of my beetle while we're, while we're figuring this guy out. I think we're going to go over to the Lepturini key and see. And see how this one plays in here. Because this guy, Lepturini, has uh, um, the expanded legs like he does. I guess now the question is, would you consider our longhorn beetle to be generally ovoid, elongate, or expanded? I might even say elongate. I think so. I'd say he's pretty long. He is not metallic, although he is pretty black and yellow. And I mean, he is pretty small, but I don't think that he's less than 10 millimeters small. I think he was exactly at 10. Yeah, he's pretty much exactly at 10. So we're not going to, or we can collect both of them. All right. The elytra are full sized. He's from the New Arctic. His antenna length are fairly short. I know that for sure on him. Look how short they are. And oh no, my um. Computer just said that OBS stopped running, but you guys seem to be. Oh, we're still here. I'm sorry if there was a glitch in the live stream. We made it through, though, huh? Okay. Alright, pronotum shape. This one should be good. So I don't think that he's wider than long this time. So we're wondering if it's subquadrate or almost a square or if it is longer than wide. I believe our answer is going to be longer than wide, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no spines or tubercles.
right, so the characteristics that we tagged into this guy also go into both Lepturini and Regini as tribes. So this guy is probably fairly closely related to the other guy. Uh, right, we are going to go with a longhorn beetle that's completely different to see if we can find ourselves in a different subfamily. Let's go with him. We already know what he is, but um, he should be fairly fun to identify as a longhorn beetle because he's so different than everybody else. And I'm not sure what subfamily he's in, so it'll be a test of a test of the key too. Oh, I know what species he is. I don't know what subfamily that is in. Nearctic. All right, let's just say open it all up and then we'll close it as we answer them. Um, this guy is definitely a cylindrical body. He is the most cylindrical of bodies. Let's see. Look at how big and fat he is. Oh, friends, don't fall over. I want to show you off to the world. All right, so you can see his body is pretty much round. He's circular. He does not have that flat body like most longhorn beetles do. So we're just going to click that one in there. Brown to black. I want to answer the question about the elytra at the bottom. Alright, we're going to Google and see what subfamily Monolema is in. He's in the Lemini. All right, so When I clicked in the Arctic, Lemians disappear. And so does Prianus. There are definitely Prianus beetles in North America.
in the Arctic region covers most of North America, Greenland, Central Florida, and the highlands of Mexico. And if we're talking about longhorn beetles in North America and Mexico, and we click in the Arctic, we definitely shouldn't be discarding the Prionis longhorn beetles and the Lemians. Interesting. All right, we're not gonna use geographic distribution and hope that we get to the right place. Can't zoom out any further than what we already have. This guy's pretty big. We're going to try one more thing. We can zoom out a little bit further. Just a little bit. of taper. Not distinctly tapering. Which one do we want to go into? We can talk about elytra really quick. See, the thing is that this beetle's elytra technically does cover its abdomen, and it's not small. Not spines. All right, we answered the elytra questions. We answered the body questions. Let's go look at her head. We're finally getting to one of the two subfamilies. I know which subfamily this guy's supposed to be in, and we're finally hitting it on the head. So, the issue was that we wrote that it was Nearctic, 
Which is interesting because it is Nearctic, Mr. Key. So I guess if you, if I was suggesting somebody to use this key, I would say definitely don't put the distribution in first. Alright, let's look at the antenna. The antenna are fun to look at. Alright, so antenna insertions. I would say the antenna insertions are between the eyes and not near the mandibles, considering the mandibles are all the way down its face. Um, its antenna length is going to be on the moderate side. Hey. I guess Lemians are supposed to have antenna that extend beyond the middle of the elytra. I guess maybe a little. All right, so if we are a second antennal segment, it's definitely going to be less than the third as long as one, yeah, this one, length to width. Head without distinct temples, head with distinct temples. I wonder what separates Priyanani from Lamiani. Let's go to legs. Tarsi? Alright, so whether the Tarsi have a third segment concealing that's concealing the fourth segment. So right here, we're looking at the toes. So if I go ahead and zoom in on some of these toes, try and find a good one. I mean, I can see it. Oh, there's a good one, okay. Let's see if I can describe this to you really quick. Alright, All right, so if we are looking at, um, we're going to try and just imagine this leg right here. Yeah, this leg right here. So this is the end of the last segment of the leg and this is going to start the tarsi or the little toes. We're counting one segment, two segment, three segments. And then this is where this last segment kind of ends, but it's bifurcate, so there's like two pieces of it. And if we look over here at this pad, you can see that it's kind of two. And so if we look over here, um, then you've got the extra tarsal claw, and you've got this hidden segment in between that furcation, in between that where the tarsi kind of opens up. And that's what this question is all about. It's whether or not 
there's kind of this hidden tarsal segment on its leg, and it does. So with concealing. I think it's funny sometimes when keys are like, yes, this obvious thing that I took a picture of. And then even when you look at a picture of it, you're like, I'm not really sure. Presence of oblique groove. Do you guys see an oblique groove? This is going to be a characteristic that separates Prianus from Lamiani. This is what we wanted. All right, so we're going to be looking at the protibia. So the femur of the tibia, we're looking at the second segment of the leg. And we are looking at what's called the terminal lamellae. And so, um, let's see, terminal is going to be in the end. Protibia without broad terminal lamellae, protibia with. All right, so if we are looking at this picture, we're looking at, I believe they're talking about these two spines right here, whether or not this, the tibia kind of has this shape in comparison to this kind of a shape of tibia. And we're definitely going to go with this one. And we end up with Lamiani! Yay! Guys, we got to the right one. I'm so excited. Okay, so, um, let's see if the Lamians have a key. Look at that! They do! All right, guys. Monolim... Monolimini? Monolimini. That's kind of fun. Monolima has its own tribe. Look at that. Look at that. All right. So essentially, we know where we're going. We're going to this Monolimi, um, Monolimini <laughs> tribe. I'd like you guys to try and say that. That's fun. Um, and we're going to see, we're going to see about getting there. So we're going to avoid this geographic distribution question forever. Because it threw us off the first time pretty bad. I would say for sure. No metallics. And I mean, he's a pretty decent sized longhorn beetle. Let's see what his size comes in at. He comes in at about 35 millimeters, moderate. The eye is either reniform or it completely, the antenna completely cuts the eye in half. And I'm going to tell you, we've already looked at this a couple of times, but the eye is reniform. It's not, those antenna don't cut the eye completely in half, whereas some longhorn beetles it does. Let's see.
question is, if you stand him on his face, does he have antennas that expand, extend past his head? Or eyes that extend past his head? Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Without distinct tufts. I want to collect a longhorn beetle that has... I want to collect a longhorn beetle that has tufts on its antenna. I think that would be super, super cute. It's a fun game trying to get everything under the microscope and in focus. Let's go to the pronotum. I mean, I would say the pronotum on our guy is actually pretty square, so if we're talking about the pronotum, it's this shape right here. I'd say it's not that much longer than it is wide, or wide than it is long. Subquadrate, I'm happy with that. Lateral margin, definitely with that distinct acute spine, you can see those guys. Alright, so with these guys, um, my monolima, it's a desert dwelling cactus longhorn beetle, alright? It has this hard outer shell but it doesn't have wings to fly with. And so he has this elytra to kind of hold in his body moisture, but he doesn't have any um, hind wings and therefore his wings are reduced. Um, and that gets us down to three different tribes. Alright, so the question is, do your toes, are your toes spread apart, or are they closer together? Broadly divergent tarsi. That one was going to be too hard for you guys to see, so I didn't stop to show you. So I have 19, 19 characteristics out of 24 characteristics chosen, and I still have two tribes left. I'm going to see what happens if I hit in the Arctic. 
All right, so Mona Lima stayed there. So now we have to try to find the difference between this monolima and the parmini, parmenini, parmenini. Guys, Latin names are fun to attempt to pronounce. That's the only thing about lucid keys, is that once you get down to the very end, sometimes it can be difficult to try and find like the last characteristic that you need to help identify this thing. Or sometimes you can then just take these two tribes and then go look them both up and say, alright, which one do I think, you know, is it closer to? have one more characteristic that I haven't clicked on yet. I think it's this one. Yeah. The mesococcal cavity in relation to the mesiephemeron. And this is going to be the difference between whether it is monolema or parmini. So let's check it out. Mesococcal cavity and the mesiephemeron. Alright. You see that very descriptive picture? So this key is just going to get it down to these two tribes for us. And then we would essentially have to go into the informationals about them and then read and see which one is most, most likely. But this guy, I know he's a monolima. Look how cute he is. There you go. Do you guys feel a sense of accomplishment when we get all the way down to a complete one? Sometimes it takes a while to identify an insect down. Um, and that's just because you're learning not only about the insect, but you're learning about vocabulary too. You have to learn all of the new words. All right. I kind of want to try this guy. Just because he's so fluffy. Look how fluffy he is. I will introduce you to the floof. Such a cool picture, guys. I took it. How much closer can we get to the floof? So that's our friend 
here, the longhorn beetle, and we're gonna see if we can identify see um see if we can identify him or her. Our um our key doesn't seem to want to to let us choose in the Arctic region, so we are just going to not choose our region. Let's see. Refresh. Nope. Wrong key. Adults. Very good. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got these variety of subfamilies. Hopefully we get one that we haven't gotten before. That's our goal. We like to keep the diversity in the collection fairly wide. No geographics. Body shape. Generally flattened. He's, um... He's adorable. I would say that he's generally brown with yellow floof. Because his body is actually brown, and that's what we're asking about. They're asking about the body coloration. We're going to skip that one, though, really quick. Whether or not the body tapers. Let's scroll them up really quick. Body doesn't taper too much. Not distinctly. Alright, let's look at the antenna. The antenna are some of my favorites to look at. feel like the questions about the antenna tend to be easier too. So we can get some check marks down on the paper. So the question is whether or not the antenna are located next to the mandibles or between the eyes. We're going to look at her face first. Look at how cute her little face is! Oh my goodness. You must all see this. Look at her face. Aww. She's got such a fluffy face, guys. All right. Um, I would definitely say that these are antenna are going to be inserted more like between the eyes and less like closer to the mandibles, right? So we're going to go between the eyes. The general length of the antenna is moderate. Um, we're not going to click that one because it got rid of all of the options. Is it going to be another lepturini? This key really likes to tell me that all of my beetles are in the Lepturini family. I wonder if it's the largest subfamily. I would have thought Cerambicini would have been the largest subfamily. Alright, let's look at antennal segment 2 in comparison. So we have another antennal antennae that have this um, small segment right here. That's what they're asking about. Head narrowed behind the eyes. I wish.
wouldn't say so. Pronodal Karani present. Present but only sending partial or absent. Absent. All right, so when we're looking at this, is calling it the pronodal Karani present. Um, lateral means on the side, pronotal means on the pronotum, and carine or carine. Um, this means like a suture or a connect, it's a connection in the exoskeleton that makes um, a dark line. So if we look at this picture, we're going to blow up this picture really fast so that you guys can see. This line right here is what they're talking about. It's whether or not that the pronotum has a crease, I guess, right here. And if you look at our specimen, there is no crease. It tends to be very, very round. And so uh, for our answer, we are going to end up saying that it is absent. Because there is no crease right there. Um, not distinctly tapered. Oh. Let's look at the tarsi. How are your toes doing? This is going to be a way better example of a tarsal claw of a beetle. The last one was very, very difficult to see um, because it was tucked up underneath and it was black. In comparison, this one's a lighter color and is way out in the open, so we should be able to see it a little easier. Um, our question is whether or not, so right about here, the question is whether or not the there is a hidden tarsal segment right here. And I'm gonna tell you there totally is. And so this is the tibia, and these are the tarsi one, tarsi two, and then tarsi three. It's bifurcate, meaning that there's like two lobes. And in between the lobes, there's a little itty bitty segment that's hidden, and then the longer one. So this is actually one, two, three, four, five segments. And we call that um, pseudo-tetrameris because it looks like there's four, but it's pseudo because there's actually five. And if we're looking at the shape of that tarsi, we're going to say that it is strongly emergent with broad lobes. All right.
let's look at the protibia. This is going to be our answer to our if it's a limian or if it's a cerambicini. And hey guys, we got it to a different uh, to a different subfamily. I believe this one's going to be a cerambicini. So let's see. I don't think we're going to find an oblique groove, but we're going to look anyway. See, the thing is that there is a picture for the protibia without an oblique groove, but there is no picture for a protibia with an oblique groove. So we're going to have to make it up and see if we can guess what an oblique groove would look like. I definitely do not see a groove anywhere on that anywhere on the protibia. Pro meaning the first and tibia meaning the second segment of the leg. Of the first leg, in fact. Alrighty, we made it to Serambicini. This is a new subfamily. Alright. Yay! New key! We're gonna see if we can get it down to tribe. Ooh, there's so many tribes. Well, there's 29 features available, so let's check this out. So this is how a lucid key works, and um, excuse me, I'm yawning. So this is how a lucid key works, and it tends to be, um, it tends to be, I don't know, it almost feels open-ended, um, because uh, when you're doing like a dichotomous key, you know you're making progress as you're kind of moving through the key, and the numbers are getting higher, and you know you're getting closer and closer to an answer. Whereas with this one, it tends to be, I'm gonna turn off that light really quick. Um, Whereas with this, um, we tend to have, uh, like you can answer a bunch of questions that don't take you anywhere um, because you've already answered one couplet that get, had knocked like most of the species off. So if you watch um, the entities remaining and as they go away, sometimes there's like one key characteristic that only a certain number, um, that only a certain number of um, longhorn beetles will have. There's like maybe one characteristic that's very unique to two or three, and then that knocks out all of the other friends. Um, and then doing the rest of the key tends to be a little bit more difficult. That's all right. Um, now, it's also why I kind of love identifying insects is that you get kind of this sense of accomplishment after you've figured it out. Um, plus, um, plus it's kind of like a mystery. And it's fun to check out all of the little itty bitty features of these insects. So we're going to get back to um, looking at this friend and seeing if we can identify him past subfamily. Generally elongate. I mean, I wouldn't call him ovoid. Without 
reflection. Sorry, buddy, you're not metallic. He's a decent sized longhorn beetle. Let's check him out. He's at about he's at about 30 millimeters. Most of my longhorn beetles are moderately sized as it turns out. Eyes trilobate. Interesting. I've never seen trilobate eyes. Three separate lobes? That's wild. So if you look closely at up here at the head, I'm not going to move it around too much because you can already see that you've got this side, this is the top of the eye, and it actually hooks around. And if you look down here, that's actually the bottom of the eye. So, um, and you can see kind of here on this side that you can see that the eye doesn't get split in half. So we know that it is this reniform or this kidney shaped eye. Is the head distinctly wider than the pronotum? No. Does he have distinct tufts of hair on his antenna? No. I would say his antenna are generally filiform. So those are fairly straight antenna. All right, are there spines on the antenna? No. Number of antennomeres, that's a fun question. I guess let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Oh, that didn't change anything. Not distinctly swollen. <laughs> Is your antenna swole? No. Nah. Not distinctly. <laughs> Head distinctly elongate forming a muzzle. <laughs> no, my beetle is not muzzled. Thank you very much. Would you guys say that this is approximately subquadrate? I would say so. This is fairly square. Let's go subquadrate. I hope we're still on the right path. We have 52 entities remaining and 57 that we've discarded. So out of the, what, 109 different tribes, we're down to 52 potential options. And as we continue down in this key, it'll get less and less. There we go. There's no spines. Down to 48. Uh, not distinctly narrowed. I mean, that's pretty narrowed. 
We're going to skip that one. Not distinctly shiny. Definitely fuzzy. We're not going to answer that one. I don't like that one. Wings are complete. Whoa, what was that? Interesting. Huh. Electra. About as long as the abdomen. Not distinctly pointy. With distinct raised yellow markings or without distinct raised yellow markings. And it says not formed by CD, which means it's not hairy, right? So without, because the any of the yellow markings that you're seeing on our longhorn beetle are CD or hairs. No distinct spines on the Unless there are That's funny because I thought that this beetle was injured. Is it possible that those that this is bifurcate? They're so even. Hey guys, I think our elytra are bifurcate. You see how this comes to a point and then there's this indent? I thought that somebody, I thought that the end of his elytra just broke off, but it's exactly even on the other side. have it down to 44 tribes. Wonder what happens if I would put in the Arctic. It cuts it in half. It's almost worth trying. Oh, right. So we have featured, we have chosen 25 of the 29 key features. So there's four of them. There's four of them that if we answer them, hopefully we get, we'll get it down to one or two options instead of 20. All right, antenna length. Distinctly the pedestal. Distinctly long, more than two times long as wide, or not distinctly long.
distinctly long, more than two times long as wide, or not distinctly long? I would say it's distinctly long. But none of them have that characteristic, so I would say it's not distinctly long. Yup. Alright, the pronotum shape. Let's see. Whether it is narrowly narrowed basally or not distinctly narrowed. I mean, So their question is this right here. This is the pronotum and this is the elytra. The question is if right here is quote unquote distinctly narrower basally. So if this is narrower than itself. Oh, this is not distinctly. So I guess the question is, is this point the narrowest point of the entire pronotum? I would say not distinctly. I'd say it's pretty even. We should just check to see if the answer is going to help us before we, f we spend time trying to figure it out. All right. We're going to leave that one. I don't like that one. We're going to leave it open, though, just in case it's the last one. Uh-huh. I mean, I would say our friend does have distinct spines. Down to 11. And we've chosen 28 of 29 characters, so the only one left to choose is this mesocoxal cavities question. I just can't even imagine what these pictures are trying to draw. So the coxy is at the base of the leg. And meso means the center, so if we're looking at the center leg at the base of it, I don't know what the coxal cavity is. might be leaving this one at Cerambicinia subfamily for now. Oh, he is 
is my favorite friend to look at under a microscope. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. I think that I am going to take a break for a minute. We looked at, let's see, I'll turn on my cam for you. All right, I think I'm going to take a break for a minute. Oh, hey. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so I think I'm going to take a break for a minute. Um, we were able to look at and get to subfamily three, maybe four specimens of longhorn beetles. Um, I would say that those um, IDs are not confirmed yet. I still need to double check a couple of sources, I think, before I'm going to, before I write those down in the books. Um, I am actually keeping track of the numbers of specimens in each family and stuff. I've got a large Excel document for all of my specimen um, for like the uh, for the databasing purposes, which has really really been a fun time too. Um, we only have one other different type of longhorn beetle that we didn't look at today, although I already have identified it to subfamily, and that's Passandrini. It's these guys right here. Um, these two guys right there, I believe are in this odd subfamily of longhorn beetles that have really short antenna, all right? And so they are, they're beetles that look very similar to, I don't know, other wood boring beetles, I guess. Um, and then these longer, these, these larger beetles, longhorn beetles up here on the top that we didn't look at, this guy with like this guy with the crazy spines on his um, pronotum, those guys are going to be in the subfamily Prionini. I believe they're in the genus Prionis. Um, I would have to confirm just to check up on characteristics to see like what features um, Prionis has in comparison to other genus genera in the area. Um, but I know that um, I'm. I'm like 90% sure that they're Prionis. Um, I believe that this guy, though, I believe this guy's a Palo Verde borer, so closely related to Prionis, but not really. Um, although I haven't gotten him down into a genus that I want yet, that I that I agree with yet. Sometimes. Um, you can spend an hour looking at a key and trying to find an identification all to figure out that you ended up at the wrong spot and you have to do it over. Um, and so that's a little bit of the work that we're doing here together is just, you know, taking a little bit of time to look at characteristics, learn about the keys together. Um, and one day I hope that you guys also give me... Um, um, uh, your opinions, you know? So if, we, if we're looking at an insect together, like a longhorn beetle, and um, we're seeing some characteristics on the pronotum that you might see something that I don't, you might have an opinion that I don't, and it would be really cool to kind of spitball and say, hey, I think that this is what it is, or hey, I think that this characteristic was actually a little different, or hey, you clicked the wrong button, Trisha! You know, those types of things. You guys can always kind of help me and play with this as we are going through and identifying and looking at the pretty shiny beetles. But also, we're going to be looking at other um, insects too. We're going to be hopefully identifying some of our butterflies and moths. Although those guys, I believe we're going to photo ID. So we're going to go through iNaturalist and I will show you how I um, go about identifying things with pictures. Although that's not always the best, all right, ladies and gentlemen, because um, a drawing or a photo is not going to get all of the characteristics you need, and sometimes insects are so closely related to each other that, um, that you can't really tell them apart with a picture. 
or maybe there's two species that are very, very closely linked that um, you can't tell apart by taking a picture, but also maybe the other species isn't even in the book, right? So, or, or on the database. And so that's something that we have to watch out for when we're IDing with pictures is that the database actually includes all of the species that um, it could be and that the, um, the pictures are um, descriptive enough that they show all of the characters that you need. Um, all right, so uh, this was fun, especially for uh, playing with the microscope for the first time with you guys. Um, you should let me know how you feel about it, if there are things that I, that, that you would prefer. If you really do want to see my face the whole time, I can try and make that work and make me really, really small in the corner. That could be fun, you know, um, but it's looking like there was a moment that this worked. My, um, my microscope camera and my USB camera tend to fight with each other, so when I turn my camera on, the microscope camera decides to take a pause.